Hello, everyone, and welcome to Grandstand Sports Data, your go-to channel for sports, statistics, and unbiased handicapping. And in today's video, we're going to give you the top free agents in the 2024 NFL free agent window. We're going to be tracking them according to their position, uh, their teams of interest, and basically their contract situation. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so let's start with the offensive line, and I think that this would be a good slide since it's not the most sexiest positional group, is that we just basically inform you on what you're going to be seeing going forward. Uh, to the left, you're going to see the player. Next would be his 2023 NFL team. The next would be his exact position. To the column to the right, you're going to see average, and average basically means his average ranking according to some of the top sites or top sports sites. So we had ESPN, CBS Sports, you know, websites like that. We basically averaged their free agency ranking. So the, Tyron Smith would be ranked the 14th best uh, available according to free agents on the market this season. The column to the right of that is going to be his Madden rating. I know some people are going to say, well, what does Madden rating have to do with the player, you know, itself or real life sports? We think that the player rating is a huge, I don't know if I would call it a stat, but it's a huge thing when you're looking at handicapping teams. Uh, Tyron Smith, for example, he's a 95 overall rating in Madden. He's a great football player. That's basically what it's saying. But if you look to the right in my notes, he has injury concerns. So player rating when handicapping is huge because you can see if there's a backup on Dallas, if he's a 71 overall, that there's a huge drop off between Tyron Smith and his backup. And that's huge when analyzing sports. So if you don't want to do that, if you don't want that effort, you came to the wrong place because this is where we do it. Next column will be the salary. Now, salary can be if they're already signed. Also, if they're tagged, you will see these, uh, see this information. To the right, you're going to see one, two, three, four. This is basically the teams that are interested, one being the highest interest, four being the weakest. And then next will be the notes and basically what I cover going forward or things to like let me know what to inform you, because there's a lot of players here. So it, it helps to have me have that uh, tidbit of information. So let's move on. If you want to take a look at this, you can pause the video, you know, see if your teams are up here in, teams, in terms of, you know, team interest or the players that you have available. But pause the video at any time on these slides just to get a better um, look. Also, I'd just like to mention when it comes to team interest, we didn't get it from a local blog site or you know, some rabbit hole of a website. We want guys like Adam Schefter, um, you know, just big name people in the business that have rumors of these teams. That way we're not trying to give you the misinformation. Now, it could be wrong. It could be right. Just like they, you know, they in the media, sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong. Next, we're going to move on to the tight ends and the wide receivers. As you can see, the top three have been either tagged or signed with Mike Evans, Michael Pittman, and T. Higgins. So basically the best available as of today, which is Sunday, um, would be Calvin Ridley uh, from Jacksonville. But it looks like the teams interested are going to be the New England Patriots, the Kansas City Chiefs, and the Chicago Bears in that order. I would say about Calvin Ridley and the note that I have here is that his advanced statistics show that he still has great separation. It's just that Trevor Lawrence had a hard time getting him the football. So he was getting open. It's just that he didn't have anybody to throw it to. It does surprise me a little bit that Calvin Ridley would go to New England over Kansas City. Now, I don't know if that's a fact, but having New England pop up so many times had me place them number one. And I think that that's going to lead to the next football player, which would be Gabe Davis. I think that Kansas City is looking for a cheaper option, I would expect, than Calvin Ridley. And it would be Gabe Davis. And he would be a perfect fit for Kansas City. Uh, he did well in Buffalo, and I don't. Th I think that he would be higher up in the depth chart if he was to move to Kansas City. Next would be Marquise Brown. He has interest from Tennessee and Carolina. Odell Beckham also has interest from Baltimore still. And then also San Francisco had a little bit. They were almost keep hammering Baltimore on some of the media outlets that I was looking at, but then there was little tidbits along the line of San Francisco and them hinting at that. Hunter Henry already signed, so there's no really uh, tight ends here on the list. They both have been signed. Curtis Samuel become uh, comes up next in terms of wide receivers. They don't know how interested Cleveland is now since they just traded for Jerry Judy, so 
you may want to take them off the list. But Miami and Chicago looks like front runners. Michael Thomas looks like he could be heading to Denver, even though his release has just been confirmed. And then Tyler Boyd, look for him. He has more interested teams, but these were the three teams that popped up the, the most. Next, we're going to move on to running backs and quarterbacks. None of them have actually been signed. Uh, starting from the top, Derek Henry. Derek Henry, sorry. Um, he has a lot of interest, more than the teams that are listed here. These just happen to be the teams that are most interested. But everybody is leaning Baltimore. They're saying that's the perfect fit. That may be where he goes. Saquon Barkley, as you can tell, there's been mutual interest with the Houston Texans. Now moving on to Josh Jacobs, there has been mutual interest with the Philadelphia Eagles. And then Tony Pollard, he has interest. I was thinking that maybe Dallas could resign, but I think Dallas is looking for a favorable contract from him, and he's probably not going to be up for that. Next would be Kirk Cousins, the top quarterback on the board in terms of this free agent class. Kirk Cousins, everything is pointing to him resigning with Minnesota. But Atlanta keeps popping up as well. And then also adding in the fit with the offensive coordinator, Zach Robinson. It's, I believe that those are the two dogs in the fight. Las Vegas and Pittsburgh loosely in terms of interest. But Atlanta and Minnesota seem to be the front runners. Uh, Austin Eckler, he would be next. Philadelphia, Houston, Kansas City. I think Kansas City would be huge for him. Also, believe it or not, I would like him on Houston. And I think Stroud would could benefit from him. You know, he is tre- he he is trending down. If you were to say anything about his career right now, and that doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. He'd still be a good player, even though you know you're trending down. I would say like a good third down back. You know, Stroud needs somebody to dump it off on like third and short and move those chains. Austin Eckler would be perfect for him. Next, some of the quarterbacks here, Baker Mayfield, Russell Wilson, you're starting to see interest in terms of them. We, I kind of thought that the Tampa was going to have a – was going to lock up Baker Mayfield. I think they had a hot mic in um, Kay Adams' show where Baker was basically telling – I forget who it was. I think it might have been Steve Young that he was actually going to resign with Tampa. Now it seems like Tampa's willing to have him test free agent market. Uh, Russell Wilson, he has actually visited with the New York Giants and the Pittsburgh Steelers as of today. And I guess Las Vegas is on the radar in terms of a visit for him. Now moving on to defense. And here's the defensive line. You can see Chris Jones just signed as of yesterday, Saturday. Or it might have even been this morning. A five-year, $160 million deal. You're going to move on to guys like DJ Rita. He seems to be the best defensive lineman now available since the signings of Jones and Matabuke, so it looks like Detroit is the front runner, but it's not a lot of confidence in team interest, and what I mean by that is that these teams are not necessarily, they they did their due diligence, but it's not exactly popping up in every article. He seems to be still, I guess, browsing his options, I guess is the best way to say it. Christian Wilkins isn't getting a lot of interest. From a lot more than these three teams, it's just these three teams keep popping up, with Chicago being the front runner there. Uh, Chase Young, Baltimore, that seems to be the link. I don't know if it will go down for sh- for certain, but it seems like there's mutual interest and the fit is there. Next, going all the way down to Leonard Williams. Leonard Williams, defensive tackle for Seattle. It looks like the general manager in Seattle wants to resign him. He made it a top priority to bring back Leonard Williams. Now moving on to linebackers. Linebackers, Josh Allen has recently been tagged by the Jacksonville Jaguars, thus leaving, I would say, Levante David to be the best available uh, linebacker here. Um, He wants Tampa Bay, but this is a quote from him, anything can happen. So he'll probably test free agency if they can't lock down a deal for Tampa Bay. Daniel Hunter from Minnesota Chicago seems to be the interest there. Also, Jacksonville throwing their hat into the race. Brian Burns was recently tagged. And then you got a few Baltimore uh, linebackers. Uh, Baltimore, Jadavion Clowney, all signs are showing Miami, at least for interest, and that's it. Where Patrick Queen has a lot of teams interested. But Baltimore losing both of these guys would be tough. Uh, Andrew Van Ginkle, a guy that I personally liked. I thought he played some good football this season. Uh, a lot of teams are interested, but there's no real leader. It's just, a, I want to say, almost 10 to 12 teams 
that just show up in terms of the article, but there's no consistent one or two teams that keep showing up. It's just a bunch of, I guess, loose team interest. Uh, Eric, Eric Kendrick's just been released. It's too early to tell on his end. Uh, you can pause the video for the rest of the guys. I'd like to move on to the next positional group. So moving on to safeties. Number one safety on the board here was Antoine Winfield. He's recently been tagged by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Interesting tag with for the Buccaneers since they had linebackers also that were going to be reaching free agency. And as you can see from the names down below, some of these guys have just been released to create cap space. You're talking about all pro guys like Justin Simmons, Jordan Poyer, you know, Jamal Adams as well. But just a note for Jamal Adams, he actually, Seattle hasn't closed the door on a possible return. And I'm I'm basing this on the fact that it's got to be a team-friendly deal. Because the same thing is with Quandre Diggs. I just think that if they're going to bring them back on team-friendly deals, but if they feel like they have more value in the market, they will move on. And I would say that that's the more likely scenario. And especially with all these moving pieces at safety, this makes teams, you know, they can now be flexible. So Seattle, by, you know, letting go of the two safeties that they have, can actually hey, say, hey, maybe we can, you know, throw our hat in the, for a guy like Geno Stone, as you see in the, uh, at the bottom, and kind of get him or acquire maybe even guys that are higher rated, like Jordan Poyer or someone of the like. Now, that's not informative opinion that's i mean it, it's not informative facts or informative information it's just opinion uh some guys that you will see kyle duggar he's been tagged by the patriots but they use the transition tag so what this means is that any team can now put in an offer for kyle duggar and new england has the right to match though so that's the caveat to that so as just like the other slides you can pause the video see what uh guys from your team or Teams that, are, you know, if you're a fan of, say, Green Bay and the guys that they're interested in, you can take a look from there. Let's move on to the next positional group, which will be the cornerbacks. And the cornerbacks, the highest, Legereus Sneed would be the highest, and he has been tagged by the Kansas City Chiefs. There are reports, though, or some, you know, articles that I have been reading that there's a possibility of a trade. Uh, Tredarius White, next. He's just been actually released by the Buffalo Bills. Still early to tell, but some front runners in the clubhouse are Baltimore and Detroit. Detroit's looking for cornerbacks heavily, as you can see moving down below. You can see Stephon Gilmore. They're in the market for him. Detroit's in love with him. He's a little bit older, though, so you could see him either Detroit, Kansas City, or even a re-signing with the Dallas Cowboys. Kendall Fuller, he is also on the Detroit Lions radar. Kenny Moore. He, he stated that he wants to stay in Indianapolis. But that it is a business. And, you know, even though he's obvious that he wants to stay in Indy, things can happen. And Dallas has become one of the teams that are ready to pounce on Kenny Moore if he does hit the market. You got Chitta Woozy. He's been uh, he's likely to resign with the Cincinnati Bengals. Darius Williams is another uh, cornerback. It's, it's a, I would say, a very heavy cornerback class in terms of free agency. Uh, Patrick Peterson is another veteran that people you know, may look at, I think him maybe, you know, as your second or third corner or even a depth piece at this point in his career, since he's a little bit older, would be huge for maybe a title contender. Maybe like a Kansas City or, you know, teams who are knocking at the door. But um, that's the free agent class. So let's move on. And like to thank you guys for watching. If you like this type of material, please subscribe. Uh, also, if you wouldn't mind liking, what this will do is it'll take our content travel through that YouTube algorithm, and get more eyeballs on our content, which would be greatly appreciated. Also would, would be appreciated is if you share and also comment down below. Like always, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.